In this video, we will be considering an economic order quantity with a quantity discount. Our supplier says, if we buy at least 100 units, the price is $12. If we buy at least 500, the price is $11. And if we buy at least 1,000 units, the price is $10. Given this information, we want to compute the order size, we want to find the order size that minimizes the total cost of ordering and holding and the cost of the goods. The place we will start with this is with our good friend, the EOQ. We will take two times annual demand times the setup or ordering cost and divide by the holding cost. But because the cost of the unit is going to change based on our quantity, we will use a holding cost that is proportional to the value of the item where I is the interest rate and C is the cost of the item. The other pieces of information we need for this problem, the setup or ordering cost is $200, annual demand is 1000 and the interest rate is 25%. We will begin by calculating the EOQ for the cheapest price. If that EOQ were to be larger than 1,000 units, that would have to, by definition, be the cheapest answer because it would be at the cheapest possible unit price. And because it is the EOQ, it would be balancing the ordering and holding cost. We'll calculate that EOQ and see what we find. Unfortunately, the EOQ when the price is $10, is only 400 units, which is obviously not a large enough purchase quantity to obtain the price of $10. So we will next, well, we will then in a few minutes, evaluate what our total costs would be if we made the purchase size that we would have to make to get that price. We will consider the total annual cost of a purchase size of 1,000 units. Because again, 400 was not bigger than 1,000, we need to turn our attention to the next cheapest price, the price of $11. When the price is $11, the EOQ returns a value of 381, which is again, unfortunately not large enough to get us the price of $11. Therefore, in a few minutes, we will compute the total annual cost using the order size that we would have to use to get that price namely an order size of 500 units. Lastly, because 381 was not big enough to put us into the range where this price was relevant, we have to go to the next cheapest price, $12. That EOQ returned us a value of 365. And because 365 is larger than 100, we will evaluate the total cost using an order size of 365 and a price of $12. I would just like to highlight that in these three EOQs, the only thing that was different, the only thing that changed was the price per unit. Now we need to see which is the cheapest combination. 1,000 units at $10, 500 units at $11, 365 units, at $12. To do this, we need to look at the total costs as a function of our order size Q. And there are three components to this cost. There is the holding cost, which is the interest rate times the cost per unit times the average amount of inventory, which is Q divided by two. There is the ordering cost per year, which is the annual demand divided by the order size Q times the setup or ordering cost S. And then lastly, the cost of the units we will be buying, which is just equal to the annual demand times the cost per unit C. So we'll start with our first candidate, a thousand units at a price of $10. So when the order size is 1,000 units, the cost per unit is $10, we have holding cost of $1,250 per year 
ordering cost of $200 per year and a cost of goods sold, goods purchased, $10,000, bringing the total cost to $11,450. We can see because we are not at the EOQ, the holding cost and the ordering cost are nowhere close to each other. We'll now look at the cost of buying 500 units at a time at a cost of $11. When the cost is $11 and we buy 500 units at a time, total cost is $12,087. So lastly, we will look at buying 365 units at a price of $12. So what we see in the end is when the purchase quantity is 365 at a price of $12, total cost is $13,000. $95.45. Therefore, the cheapest total cost comes from $11,450 when we purchase 1,000 units at a time. And again, I would just like to highlight the differences. What change when we go from one iteration of the cost calculation to the next? Um, all that changes is the order quantity is changing and the cost of the goods are changing. So the cost here, the cost here, the order size here, and the order size here. And then the next time it goes to $11, goes to $11, it goes to 500 units, it goes to 500 units. And then the last time it goes to $12, goes to $12, it goes to 365 units and 365 units. So again, we start with the EOQ, we calculate the EOQ for each cost. If that EOQ is too small to meet the minimum quantity required to get that price, then we will evaluate our costs using that minimum quantity, the 1,000 or the 500. When the EOQ was larger than the minimum quantity, in this case, 365, we evaluated the total cost of buying 365 units at a time. Then we use this cost function we looked at the holding cost plus the ordering cost plus the cost of the goods. We added them all up and chose the answer with the lowest total cost, in our case, buying a thousand units at a price of $10 each. I hope this has been helpful.